I am yours truly, Bonnie Wheeler. Je m'appelle Alpha Blondie. Greetings, I am Judy Mowat. Hi, I'm Timothy White, author of Catch a Fire, The Life of Bob Marley. This is Thomas Mafumo. I'm Roger Staffens. This is Amela Lemeka coming to you. Hi man, this is Majek Fashek from Africa. Welcome my brothers and sisters. This one we call Reggae Strong. A regular TV show like this could be called Reggae Week. But Reggae Not Week. Reggae Strong. Welcome to Reggae Strong. You have been tired to see with fears. Me say you can get me out of the race. February 6 marks the birthday of Bob Marley, the king of reggae. This strong, we remember him. Bob Marley was the preeminent black man in the last third of the 20th century. I think he was the greatest men, period, of the 20th century. I know with every exposed nerve ending in my body that two or three hundred years from now, if there are still people on this planet, they will still know the name Bob Marley and they will still sing his songs because his songs were the new psalms. I am, I am a disciple of Bob Marley, you know. I love his philosophy, I love the person, you know. And uh, uh, as, as one of the 12 tribe of Israel, you know, I follow him, I follow his inspiration because he's positive, you know, he, fo he fought for peace. And that's what God wants. Would you say Bob Marley was a man who was very tuned in to what his purpose on this earth was? Very, very attuned. And he was, I think he has fulfilled his purpose. And, you know, I think he's a great example to the whole world and to the whole music industry. And a lot of singers should really take pattern from Bob because he discovered what he came here. He was, a, he was a vessel and he discovered that he came here for a purpose and he really worked on it to, you know, the manifestation that we all saw. He's a man who really follow people, see? You understand me? Me, 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 me is not a leader, but me is not a follower leader. Me is a man who kind of train for things for myself. And me meet this brother where he's not going to university. He's never even going to high school, really. But yet, street wisdom gave him an intellect where we get up and follow this brother here yeah, with all the teaching and schooling and things we get. We never really meet no other, no, no other one like that. You understand? Where my brother probably say, why is a man of lesser intelligence and now? Why if he, if he didn't get the opportunity to really go to university and them things, I really think it would have been a yes to it. Because in a film only like way I'm always a strive for here. You understand him set him goals very high. Very, very high. It was only one Bob Marley, whether you know you want to look at it from a musical standpoint or an historic standpoint or whatever. And he's, Bob Marley knew he was never, ever going to come again. And his personal destiny had a, had a great, great importance to it, you know. And what's fascinating about Bob Marley as a figure is that from, really, from moment one, he had a personal agenda. Bob Marley made millions of dollars, you know, and became enormously famous throughout the world. He's probably one of the most famous people of my lifetime. And he never really spent the money he made. You know, it doesn't make him a better person that he did or he didn't. The point is, he had a personal agenda. He spent every day getting things done from a cultural standpoint. Things that transcended the idea of like having a career or not having a career. There was Desmond Dega and the rest of them. Jimmy Cliff was the first to be heard. And then we, we, we didn't know nothing about Mali. And later we heard about Mali. And that's when I actually listened to his music and found out that the message within the music was very strong. And I said, well, where was this man when we were listening to all this rubbish? 
I humbly accept the fact that I was able to do backup singing for the king, the king of reggae, and a messenger sent by the Almighty God. I am really privileged to know that I had that opportunity of working with Bob. And I knew one day that I would have gotten the chance to go there on my own as a soloist because I started as a soloist, but I didn't know how it would happen. I'm very sorry to know that the way it happened is that Bob is not physically here anymore, but he has made it possible for us to continue his work that we have started with him. Wheelers had to have a name, you know, and the name Wheelers just had to come out of someone mouth where I couldn't tell you. And then, because we used to wheel and live the life of people, suffering people every time, and experience that too, and share it too. People was always weeping and wheeling in our communities based on the different things that were reaching them, you know, victimization of every kind. Question. So the name, I think the name come out of that. It wasn't like a one that's given a name. It came out of the whole tradition, the whole experience, the liberty. That every individual was and still is and will always be wherever they may be a wheeler. I'll never forget the first reggae song I heard. Uh, I had read a, a review in Rolling Stone of the Catch a Fire album. It sounded interesting. I found a used copy for $1.98 in Berkeley, where I lived at the time. And I took it home, and my mind was completely blown. I had never heard music like this in my life. And I remember for three weeks, uh, my roommate, a uh, British photographer named Tim Page, and I just played this record over and over and over. The only time we would go to the... Uh, turntable would be to flip catch a fire over to the other side i mean to this day i think i know every single note on that album his music was well was the what we uh, we, we 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 call militant and had a very very strong message and i think you uh, i mean you can listen to malice music forever and ever you won't get tired of listening to the to his music Yes. Thank <laughs> you. 
say this and say that, you know what I mean, and Bob, Bob is a man, Bob <coughs> represents the Nazarene, which is the Rasta man, where Christ was a Nazarene 2,000 years ago, he passed through the same room and let all the churches and the members of churches follow him, lock up church and run behind him in the valleys and the mountainside, so likewise did Bob Marley, went to Rome and draw away all the people from the church to come and listen to the Nazarene one more time. His message was really strong, positive, and very truthful and biblical. And these are words of inspiration. These are words that we need to give us strength in this time, especially because a lot of the things that he would sing about are now coming to pass. He was years ahead, you know, of everything. So we always, his songs and his lyrics and his music can never die. As the saying goes, music alone shall live. Thank you for coming tonight. Happy birthday to the king. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. Long time with his father and son, son, son. He said, Fatherhood, ah, Jah is a father, right? Jah is a father, you know. My father is my brother, and everybody else is my brother. Cause you have plenty of children, and we all have a brother and sister. So Jah is my father, and he's my father, father and. My father is my brother, right? Here. We've been here. We, you know, 
But um, I belong to Kingston. I'm still having it definitely. So you don't know, you don't know the gang personally. Yeah, like, I yeah. just like him. No, no man, just like, uh, just like my father. I go here. I came because of Bob Marley. In fact, we were um, invited to come and participate to show our artwork concerning the African heritage and also to support the day for Bob Marley too. So where are you from? I'm from Ghana, West Africa. So you heard of Bob Marley when you were in Ghana? Sure. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. What did you hear about Bob Marley when you were in Ghana? Um, I heard about him through music which was very touched, you know, on my side too. So I did love whatever he was preaching through the music. We can't forget Brother Bob Marley. The next song is dedicated to Bob Marley. You see, we're going to put our hands together like this because this is conscious music. Love is lovely. Whatever you are, anybody standing beside you, just hold my hand. Because we must unite. Don't be shy, you know, just, you know, feel free. And we're going to sing the song together now. What pirate, yes, they rob I. Sold I to the merchant ship. Minutes after they took I. From the battle is me. With my hand was be strong By the ends of the Almighty We followed in this generation Triumphantly Won't you live to sing Another song Set from mental slavery, none better safe than free our mind. Have no fear for atomic energy, none of them can stop your time. How long shall they kill our prophets? Why we stand aside? Some say they just a part of it. It's all I ever have Redemption song Another song of freedom Redemption song Redemption song in South Africa and yeah this is it's part of the system you know what I mean my brothers and sisters I will say now so we've got to fulfill the boo hey. 
I think is one of the most important political moves for the want of a better world. Bob ever really realized as a black poet. For while they were meeting in Lancaster House in England to discuss the plans for the ceasefire and the independence of Zimbabwe. Bob really wrote that song, Zimbabwe. And to the response we hear it catch on as Zimbabwe, them decide to invite Bob to come to the uh, independence ceremony in Zimbabwe and them send some man from Zimbabwe with a letter and thing from the president and Minister of Mobilization, Edgar Takere, who was really the main man behind it. But the letter really invited Bob Marley alone. And Bob really showed him, say, him really can't do that because him one really couldn't come perform. And plus, it's an organization. You know what I mean? It's like a try. I tell him, tell the brother, it's a try. You know what I mean? So the whole way. Well, them reply and show us that due to the enormous expense that the independence ceremony would cost, them really couldn't afford for it bring the band and equipment and all them thing and so why Bob show them so then it's him baby and him after dead when went into band and him would just use him own money and after Chris see the commitment he make I think Ireland chipping about fifty thousand pounds or something like that towards it and rent a plane and we carry thirty two ton of equipment down there I mean what is on the stage really be sound lights and really put on a show for the people then you know what i mean and the reception we get from even the airport was it was my second time going to africa but this one was we, we never even had a chance to even kiss the floor we step off on a, a red carpet with the whole parliament lying both sides and someone shaky and someone give a beer hug welcome home brother i mean it's like it's like driven almost to tears, I mean, this is the first like real official, I mean like coming to Africa in a them kind of way, boy, it's like, it's like wow, it's about big dog and Rasta. And when we reached at the airport, it's like the crowd outside was so massive that they mashed down the customer all, man, they never even get for search of bags and they might just whisk me out of the airport to keep off the crowd, because the crowd just want, yeah man, and they, all kind of dignitaries are coming up. Prince Charles just land. A uh, Jamaican party was on our plane as well. And why well, is just Bob Marley? You know what I mean? Every man got a right to decide his own destiny. And in this judgment, there is no partiality. So harm and harm. 
with arms We'll fight this little struggle Children, that's the only way we can Overcome a little trouble And brother, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right Yes, cause soon we'll find out who is the real revolutionaries And I don't want my people to be contrary If you have that power of faith, you can realize your own personal destiny, you know? I mean, Bob died wearing uh, Selassie's ring. You know, the idea that, uh, I mean, the odds, as Neville Garrick went about his friend seemed to be, of a man, you know, going to his maker, you know, wearing some artifact of, uh, of his own god. I mean, what are the odds of that? It's an astonishing thing, you know? And for Bob to have done so much, in, you know, in the 30 odd years he lived, it feels like he lived for a hundred. It's amazing. Get up, stand up, did you hear? Stand up for your right one more time. Get up, stand up, did you hear? Don't give up the fight. You stand up, you stand up. Bob Marley is not dead because he is voice still. The film still, you know, human beings don't die. It's a kind of metamorphosis, you know, because God will not just bring us here and kill us all, you know, and that's it. Everybody die and finish. No, you know, it's a strategy because we got life all the places, all the places, man. And it's us, it's the energy that travels all those places, you know. Because God didn't want to make too much kinds. You know, he put all the kinds right here. For me, the most important thing is to follow the path of Bob Marley. Peace. Peace is a must, you know, because we are children to raise. Do you miss Bob Marley and Peter Tosh? I mean, I mean, if I miss them, who don't? Almighty God is the 